the going, we really miss you. You know that? Really, I, I mean it. Um, it's really good to be back with you guys today. And um, today for our time together, I want to share a book with you that is one of our favorites at home. It's one of Rowan's favorites. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And um, and this is a book just to kind of, you know, um, to kind of remem- remind us of some things that are that are kind of at the center of, of what we do, of who we are as Christians and, and who we are here as uh, the church at Abbey. Um, so this, this is this book right here, and it's called, it's called At Your Baptism. Let's read through it. At your baptism, God tells you that for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, he lived and showed God's love. For you, he suffered the darkness of Calvary and cried at the last, It is finished. For you, he triumphed over death and rose in newness of life. For you, he ascended to reign at God's right hand. All this he did for you. All this he did for you. Before you knew anything of it. And so the word of scripture is filled. We love because God loved us first. When you think about your baptism, Callie, and Ava, Cameron, everybody else. Remember that God loves you. Remember that you are part of God's worldwide family. No one can ever take these promises away from you. Let's pray. God, we pray that you would that we would never forget that we are part of your family, that no one can ever take these promises of baptism away from us. God, help us to be strong because of that. Help us to stand strong. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Children are getting their, uh, their bulletins. Turn in your, uh, in your bulletin. Uh, to speak, O Lord. It's a hymn, but it's printed as an insert. Um, We'll sing that now as a hymn of preparation.
mind. Please be seated. Let's pray. Speak, O Lord. Tell your church is built. Speak, O Lord, and renew our minds. Speak, O Lord. Speak, O Lord, and create the world as you intend it to be. All God's people said. And our scripture this morning comes from the third chapter of the book of Matthew. Just a few verses. Starting in verse 13 through the end of the chapter. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. Then Jesus came down from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him, saying, I need, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered. Jesus answered him saying, Let it be so now. For, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, and was coming up out of the water. The heavens were opened to him. And the Spirit of God, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. And so this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have a friend, a couple of friends, who just a couple of weeks ago graduated from seminary. It's been a long haul for them. Some of them we started with actually at the same time. Um, and they put a lot of hours and a lot of work in pursuing their sense of God's call on their lives. And, and about the time when finals were done, Facebook just lit up with all these, hand to my final paper, yeah! <laughs> and, and they're just really looking for, it's a small school, right? So they'll, they won't walk, actually, to graduate until, until um, May. But... Um, but this graduation that they're looking forward to, this is something that they have, they have put their time in. They have <coughs> cried and bled for this. And, and now it's coming to them, right? Good, friend, good on them. The graduation, they earned it. Graduations say more about your past than your future which if you have graduated from anywhere in the last, you know, several years, you really know what that's like. There's no guarantee of a job. But what it does is it marks and it celebrates a real accomplishment of what's come before. Graduation. It's more about what's come before than about what's coming. At 9 a.m. this morning, there were just a couple lights on it. And a woman walked through the doors expecting to meet with Pastor Kristen. But Kristen wasn't here to meet Katrina. Andy was here to meet Katrina. And they got engaged. And that's a good thing. I am so excited for you guys. This engagement has a past to it. Right? Like they've known each other for years. But an engagement's a little bit different from
from, from a graduation. Because, because an engagement, a graduation, is more about the past than it is about the future. But an engagement is more about the future than it is about the past. Right? It's more about the future than it is about the past. Friends, I want to tell you something. That the scripture that we read today is something that, frankly, I don't know if we in the church really look at it all that often. Man. Yeah, every year we have this huge celebration for Christmas, right? And the birth of Jesus is recorded, is written out in two of the four Gospels. This story that we read today shows up in every single one. Interesting, isn't it? It's because baptism is kind of like engagement. It doesn't come out of nowhere, but it's more about the future than it is about the past. Your baptism it is more about the future than it is about the past. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It's connected. There are reasons that baptism happens. But, but at its deepest at its deepest point, baptism is more about what God's calling us into than about something that we've accomplished. You know, this, this story shows up in every single gospel. And you know where it shows up in every gospel? Where are we today? We're in chapter 3. It's the first thing that happens in every gospel. Jesus is baptized, not at the end of his ministry, right before he goes to the cross, or maybe even after the cross, but he's baptized at the very beginning. Because it's about what God is calling us into, more than what we have done to get here already. I'm really excited that it's 2014. Have you been having your ear to the ground? Because God is up to something. There is stuff going on and moving in climber. Do you know it? Have you heard it? Because it is happening. Friends, I don't even know. I'm not here like holding on to some big secret that I, that I know exactly everything that's going to happen. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But friends, we are going to see new things happening in 2014. God is on the move. Things are going to happen. The, what I want to tell you today is that you are not unprepared for what's going to happen. Not entirely. We're all partially unprepared. But your baptisms are something that God is calling you this year to embrace in a fuller way than you have ever done before. Because your baptism isn't a graduation. Your baptism is an invitation. It's an engagement. It's more about the future than it is about the past. Which is to say, if you're not baptized... It's not because you haven't done enough work. If you're not baptized, you don't have to do any work in order to be good enough to be baptized. If you are not baptized and you want to be baptized, well, let's get baptized. Because, friends, I want to tell you something. God is calling you. God is calling you here and now. Do you know what happened? Did you notice what happened when Jesus was baptized? The heavens were opened. And the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. Anybody else think of the flood, Noah's flood? Have you heard that? Remember, doves are not birds that fly like ravens forever and ever. Birds are doves that want to have a place to rest. The Holy Spirit rested on Jesus that day, and it did not leave him. And friends, in your baptism, the Holy Spirit descended on you and did not leave. Now this doesn't mean, of course, that there's nothing left to do. There is much to be done. But what is to be done is to be done in joyful response. 
It is something that, that, we, that we want to do. It's things that we press into to say, what is it? What is God calling us to do? We can look at our baptisms like Jesus did, and we can say, we know that God has called us. We know that, did you, did you hear what Jesus, what God said to Jesus in his baptism? Do you know that is a word for you? You are my beloved. Eric, Brian, Sarah, Harvey, Deb, Tim, Amanda, Mike, Glenn, Eric, Libby, Kristen. You are God's beloved. God desperately wants you to know that you are loved. I, I had these huge plans for today, right? It was going to be this knock it out of the park, um, this great teaching type of sermon. We were just opening up the Bible and showing all these fantastic things that um, just would be awesome. I, I love giving that sort of thing. But the word God gave me today, he said, tell my people that I love them. So I want you to know that today. That God loves you. You don't have to do anything to get God's love for you. You have it. Because we have it, let's welcome 2014 in a way like we've never done before. Let's step into our baptism. Let's say yes to the God that said yes to us. Yesterday, our consistory did that. We had some good conversations. Good conversations. And what we're going to do right now in the ordination, or in just a minute, I guess, of elders, of an elder and a deacon, and installing elders and deacons. This is them stepping into their baptisms. This is them embracing their baptism, some of them in ways they've never done before. This is what it looks like to say yes back to God. Because, friends, God has said yes to you. People who are baptized are not a special class. They're not the Green Berets. They're not those who have done a lot of work and somehow are in God, God themselves and God's A-list. It's not what it is. God is inviting you. Inviting you. If you're not baptized, to be baptized. If you are baptized, God is inviting you to step into your baptism, to live into it. Let's do it together. God, help us to like Jesus. Be confident and know that you have called us as your own. God, bless us as we seek to follow you in 2014. And come, Lord Jesus, and make all things right. All God's people say. Amen. The deacons are invited forward to receive one offer. God, we thank you for all the drones that you have, that we have to step into our baptisms. And God, we thank you that that this is part of it. A giving of our of our tithes and our offerings, God, this part of it is following. So God, we thank you for the opportunity to give joyful now. You're in prayer. Amen.
As we begin the order for ordaining and installing our new elders and deacons, I would invite you to take out the Apostles' Creed, which should be in one of the inserts in your bulletin. And in just a couple minutes, we'll all stand and say those words together. So just keep that next to you as you begin. Beloved in the Lord, we have come to ordain and install elders and deacons in Christ's holy church. Christ alone is the source of all Christian ministry through the ages calling men and women to serve. By the Holy Spirit, all who are baptized receive a ministry to witness to Christ our Lord and to love and serve those with whom they live and work. We are ambassadors for Christ, who is the one who reconciles and makes whole. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Following Christ's resurrection and ascension, God has given the church apostles, prophets, and teachers deeds of power, gifts of healing, forms of assistance and leadership. We stand within a tradition where we believe that God calls and empowers deacons, elders, and ministers of word and sacrament. The pastors and the deacons are excited to have present to you this morning and please come forward, our new elders and deacons. This congregation has elected the following people to the offices of deacon and elder. Jason Staples to be ordained and installed to the office of deacon. Lucinda Lecters to be ordained and installed to the office of elder. Phil Beckrink to be installed as deacon and Harvey Unk to be installed as elder. Deacons and elders are called to serve as Christ serves. We look to them to be people of spiritual commitment, exemplary life, compassionate spirit, and sound judgment. Deacons are set apart for a ministry of mercy, service, and outreach. They gather gifts and offerings, care for them faithfully, and distribute them to persons who are in need with wisdom and compassion, and for the purposes that advance God's kingdom on earth. Deacons visit and comfort the distressed, provide for whatever necessities may arise, and assist the congregation in worship. Elders are set apart for a ministry of watchful and responsible care for the welfare and the order of the church. They have oversight of all members, including one another, the deacons and the ministers. They ensure that God's word is rightly proclaimed and taught, and that the sacraments are faithfully administered, equipping everyone everywhere to live in harmony with God's word. Elders assist the ministers with their good counsel and serve all Christians with advice, consolation, and encouragement. Elders and deacons, together with the ministers, form the consistory to lead God's people in proclaiming the good news to the poor, righteousness to the nation, and peace for all. The consistory provides for the welfare of the church, stewardship of property and finance, and the spiritual benefit and growth of all God's people. As the three offices of deacon, elder, and minister of word and sacrament are united in Christ, so also in the church one office is not separate from all the others. The minister of word and sacrament does not serve without the elders, neither from the deacon. Together, they enable the whole mission of the church. Everything in the church will be done decently and in order when faithful persons are called to serve, 
and responsibly fulfill their charge. I'd like to address you, sister and brother, before our Almighty God and the presence of this congregation. We ask you to answer sincerely these questions. Do you confess together with us and with the church throughout the ages your faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say yes, truly, with all my heart. Yes, truly, with all my heart. I invite you all to stand and let us profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God, the Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. You may be seated. Do you believe in your heart that you are called to Christ's church? Called by Christ's church, and therefore by God to this office. If so, say yes, truly, with all my heart. Yes, truly, with all my heart. Do you believe the books of the Old and New Testament to be the word of God and the perfect doctrine of salvation, rejecting all contrary beliefs? Yes, yes truly, truly, with all my heart. Will you be diligent in your study of Holy Scripture and your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people? and lead them by your own example in faithful service and in holy living. If so, may I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. Will you accept the church's order and governance, submitting to ecclesiastical discipline, should you become delinquent, either in life or in doctrine? I will and I ask God to help Will you be loyal to the witness and work of the Reformed Church in America, using all of your abilities to further its Christian mission, here and throughout the world? Bill and Jason, as deacons, will you faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully manifest Christ's love and care, gather and distribute the offerings of God's people, Visit and comfort the distressed, minister to the poor and needy, and strive to advance God's reign of justice and peace. If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Harvey and Lucinda, as elders, will you faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully study God's word, oversee the household of faith, encourage spiritual growth, Maintain loving discipline and provide for the proclamation of the gospel and the celebration of the sacrament. I will and I ask God to help me. Amen. I would like to ask the greater consistory, and what that means is all deacons and elders, even if you are not serving now, if you have served, to come forward as you lay hands on Lucinda to be ordained as elder and Jason to be ordained as deacon. So with a great consistory, please come forward. And this is will ask you to kneel. You may all lay your hands on it. You can lay hands on other
gentle as a dove, burning as fire, upon Lucinda, and fill her with grace and power for this ministry of elder, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to invite Jason to come forward and we'll lay hands on you and pray for you in the office of deacons. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as fire upon Jason and fill him with grace and power for this ministry of deacon in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you that Lucinda has been ordained to the office of elder and Jason to the office of deacon. And you may greet each other. for ourselves and for each other 
And we give you thanks for all of this life that you have called us to. May every grace of ministry rest on these elders and deacons. Keep them strong and faithful, that your church may prosper in peace. Grant them wisdom and courage, discretion and benevolence, that they may fulfill their charge to the glory of you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bestow your grace also upon this congregation, that they may support these deacons and elders with prayer, cooperation, and encouragement, and guard them from growing weary and doing what is right. Inspire your whole church with your spirit of power, unity, and peace. Grant to all that trust you that we may live together in love. Lead all nations in the way of justice. Direct those who govern. May they be fair, support those in need, and defend the oppressed. Lord, let your world know true peace. We praise you specifically for how we have seen your work among us in this place. We thank you for a successful quilt day for a fruitful consistory retreat, and for all, Lord, that you are planning to do among us in this next year. We submit to you, Lord, all of our hopes and plans, and we ask, Lord, that by your Spirit, you would have them be so. Give grace to all who proclaim the gospel through word and sacrament and deeds of mercy, that by teaching an example, Others may come to follow you, Lord, with all of their heart, soul, and strength. Comfort and deliver, Lord, all who are in trouble, who are in sorrow, poverty, and sickness. We specifically pray for Ernie Hinsdale as he continues to recover from a long illness. For Ernie T. Winkle, He's been admitted to Corey Hospital for bronchitis. For Josie and Paul Ted Hughes' grandson, Caleb, who was in a bad car accident and awaits many surgeries to repair his arm and his leg, grant grace to that family as they wait and pray for healing. We pray for Betty Faulkner in her diagnosis of breast cancer, and we pray that as we tie the quilt today for her, that she would know the support of the body of Christ. And for Ayanna Burkholder, the six-year-old girl with lymphatic leukemia, we ask, Lord, for your spirit to be very tangibly present. Heal them in body, mind, spirit, or circumstance, working in them by your grace, wonders beyond even our highest hopes, God, through Jesus Christ, our only Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's join us in our final hymn as we leave.
invite all the elders and deacons to join me in the back. Let's go to the fellowship hall for the greeting today. Um, please join me there after the service. Friends, God has looked on you and has said, I love you. Live in the power and the promise of the God and the creator of the ground and the sea and the sky who has said, I love you. Live. Live. Live your life to the fullest knowing that you are loved. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.